Okay, we're ready to start. About outside in development with cucumber and aspect. I'm going to be focusing very much on cucumber and really pre presenting aspect in the context of how it fits in. I myself um, spend far too much time contributing to cucumber. Uh, it was a project that was created by Aslak Helsoy, and let's take a look at some stuff about it. But the first thing I want to hit upon, why are you here? What do you want to get out of this talk? You want to get some sort of value out of it in order to learn about testing, to get value for money on your ticket, to kill an hour, something. So as a Scotland on the Rails attendee, that's you guys, what do you want? So I have to achieve this value for you. So what do you want me talking about Cucumber, showing some code examples? So what's your acceptance criteria? How can we both walk away from this presentation knowing that I've achieved your value? So I've just got an example of a scenario here. So let's go with the best one. Happy Scotland Rail attendees. So given people turn up, doing pretty well so far, when Joseph talks, again, doing quite well, then everyone should acquire some new knowledge. OK, that's probably pretty a big one. Um, no one should fall asleep. And no rotten food should be frank. Sound pretty reasonable? So you decide whether I pass or fail at the end, and there's no subliminal message in that slide whatsoever. <laughs> okay, so what's outside in? Well, when we say outside, we're thinking about the user. And the idea was we drive from business value. And the only way we realize business value is through a user interface. Now, this interface could be programmatic. It could be, if we're talking about Rails, a browser. So in this example, thinking about a browser, we actually think about the user interaction first of all. How are they going to achieve this business value through the interface? And that, in turn, pushes us down to think about, in Rails world, what should we do in our views? What do our views need to do? And those, in turn, have expectations of the behavior of controllers. Again, we push down. And controllers have expectations on models. So really, we're just driving through with each of these levels being a stakeholder, having some expectation of behavior from the levels below it. So where do Cucumber and RSpec fit into the picture? Well, Cucumber and RSpec are two tools for specifying behavior. You can really use them in a many number of different ways. But I like to think about Cucumber as more high level thinking about the feature you wish you had and the interface in order to realize the business value of that feature. Now, that's a discussion that a customer, a business person, a developer, a, a um, domain expert, everyone can engage in that sort of conversation. And since we're talking about users, we really want to try and replicate as much as possible the user's experience. So, if we're going to kind of put it in a category, it's kind of like acceptance testing or end-to-end -end testing. We cut through the entire stack. With our spec, I like to think it more about being the components and the interactions that I wish I had. So this is much more thinking about objects rather than the system as a whole, potentially isolating the system under test. So for example, just thinking about the controller, how should the controller behave? What are its expectations on the models? Just a second. Ah, that's good green tea. OK, so aspect really focusing on the objects. So this is just a really brief example, without giving you too much detail, about the flow. So we start with Cucumber, thinking about something from the user's perspective. We start off pending. We've actually got to do some work. So we create a failing Cucumber scenario. We then push down and think, right, what should the objects do? So we potentially maybe write an RSpec um, test, thinking about a specific behavior, perhaps, of an object. So that's failing first. We get it to pass. Then we may come back up and say, right, well, how are we doing? Have we achieved what the user wants yet? No, we're still red. OK, so we may come up with some more RSpec examples, some more behavior to get to our destination. We get those passing. We come back up and say, have we done what the user wants yet? And hopefully, we end up with a beautiful green cucumber. So 
a pretty good analogy that I, I like is if you imagine you were told to drive from London to Edinburgh. I like to think about cucumber being the destination, that you're in Edinburgh. It doesn't really care how you got there. You could have gone via Ireland and you'll still achieve the goal of being in Edinburgh. Also, the feedback is a huge loop. You know, you've only got little information. You know, am I in Edinburgh? No. Am I not in Edinburgh? Yes. Now, I like to put aspect into the picture as being like a GPS or a sat-nav system, but actually a decent one that doesn't lie to you. So you can imagine this is about continuous feedback. Throughout your journey, it's continuously telling you about the design of your journey, the roads that you're taking, the traffic, and you can react and improve the design of your drive based on that feedback. And this really fits in terms of a coding analogy and thinking about our spec, and especially what Evan was saying, about driving design. So without further ado, let's jump into some cucumber. Um, the tagline is behavior-driven development with elegance and joy, but personally, I prefer just QKIT, although I might get sued for that. So Cucumber consists of two main things, plain text features and then the Ruby step definitions. Let's have a look at the plain text features first. OK, so we start with a feature which has a title. And then we have this narrative block. Now, anything between feature and scenario, Cucumber actually doesn't care about. It's just like a doc block. You can have absolutely anything you want in there. Then we hit the scenario, which is actually where the real work starts. So we have a title. And then we use the language of given, when, then. So we're mapping a human concept of causality to that of a system with input, actions, and outputs. So givens are very much focused on preconditions when performing some action, and then testing the outcome. And as you can see, um, rather than saying given, given, when, then, we can just abbreviate and just use and, and it just carries the same meaning as what the previous step was. OK, so how actually do we actually get these to run? Well, this is where Ruby comes into play. Now, if we take the example, we've got a plain text line which just says, given we like cukes. So, there's this given function, a when function, and a then function. So you can see the first thing is the example of a given, and we have a relative expression as an argument. What Cucumber does is it, when it runs that plain line text, it will then scan through all your step definitions, trying to find a relative expression which will match. If for any reason you have two, Cucumber will actually shout at you loudly, because that's a pretty nightmare situation and gets quite ambiguous. So you can also see within this relative expression, we have a pattern match. And you actually notice that we are actually passing to a block. So the idea is the block actually gets the value from the pattern match. So this is a good way of extracting information from the plain text that we might want to use in a test. And then we've got a little bit of actual testing code. So we've got a little bit of R spec, if you're familiar with that, fruit should equal cukes, or you know, test unit, or to be honest with you, anything you could possibly imagine in Ruby. One thing I really want to get across with Cucumber, although this is a Rails conf, Cucumber is pretty much framework agnostic, although I do say plug and pray because, yeah, kind of agnostic. To just give you some examples of how people have been using it, we have more traditional stuff like Rails, Merb, Sinatra, but people have been using it to test iPhone, Ruby GNOME 2, and I've just been hearing about some other ones about um, using Flash systems, people using it on .NET, and I probably shouldn't say this out loud at a RubyConf, but you can also write your Ruby steps in Java. But I don't know why you'd want to do that. OK. English is a pretty cool language. Cucumber speaks English, but there is the rest of the world there. So Cucumber supports a huge number of languages at the moment. So you don't have to write your plain text in English. And if you don't see your language on here, please contribute to Cucumber and add it. It's dead simple. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail. But the beauty of how we can all do this is through something called Treetop. I'm not going to go into detail because that's a whole new talk, but Treetop rocks and a bit of a call to an action. If you've ever heard of Antler, Antler is awesome, but it needs some real Ruby love. So if anyone knows about that, please, please come talk to me. Something else that deserves a bit of love is WebRap. It's actually not part of Cucumber, but it's really integral to testing web applications. It's an in-memory browser which means it's really fast. It provides a really simple API 
like, you know, visit home page, click a link, fill in a form element. It's really like simulating user interaction. We actually come shipped with a number of step definitions or the cucumber style tests with WebRat already set up. So why are we writing cucumber features? We don't do things just because we should do it all the fucking time. We actually want to do this for a reason. And again, Evan hit upon some great points about this. We want a return on investment. We're investing on time in this process, and we want something back from it. Since we're using plain text, we have a token of conversation. We've already said that anyone can participate in this. This is one of the really beautiful things about using plain text. As an acceptance criteria, getting a definition of done, using scenarios, we can get an idea about actually what the customer wants and when they know and we know it's been achieved. Design. Thinking about from the outside, we actually produce the minimal marketable feature in that we focus very tightly from the interface how we can deliver it. And then each layer is very tightly focused on actually pushing that business value. And this has also a great design effect. Just one other thing about design. Since we're having a plain text discussion, it's a great way to try and extract domain information and explore the domain potentially with a customer. And this is our whole fills into the whole um, domain-driven development, which I'll leave as a reference for you guys later. Documentation. I can't tell you how wonderful it is to get a bug report that doesn't just say it doesn't work, but get like a cucumber feature, which says, you know, given I did this, then I did this, and, you know, this happened. And I can just execute that using cucumber. I highly recommend if you're running an open source bug tracking system. It's a great idea. So we also get functional and integrational style tests. Um, again, sometimes these are thought as an artifact from actually the design. Now, you may not actually use all of these. If you're just a developer and you just want to use Cucumber, then perhaps the token of conversation acceptance criteria isn't very important to you. So, you know, you're more focusing on the design documentation and the testing value. So, you know, it, it is flexible. It's not just necessarily about customers. Okay, so I want to kind of dive into a brief little kind of demo of the progression. And the first thing I'm going to start with is the token for conversation. So I'm going to take you a brief example. I don't know, who's heard of Love Film before? OK, cool, good number. Um, it's basically a DVD rental service. It just has a whole list of DVDs. You just click Rent. It gets added to your queue of films that you want to watch. And eventually, it'll get posted out to you. So we have a customer, a super customer. And he gives us a request. I want members to be able to rent a movie with a priority indicating how much they want to see the film. OK, so what we do is our first steps. Remember what I said about business value. What do we want to get out of the customer? We want to get the value. But probably not shouting at them, showing me the value very loudly may not be that effective. So how do we actually go about getting this? Well, using something called root cause analysis. This is also referred to as popping the Y stack. And like most great ideas, it actually originated from Toyota, I believe. Although four-year-old children could, I think, claim to have invented it first. So it's about asking why. Why do you want to do this? OK, so we can maximize allocation of our films. We've only got a finite number of films. We need to distribute them across all our customers. Why? We want to keep our customers happy. Why? So they continue with their subscription. Now, the key idea of this is to help the customer avoid logic traps and assumptions and help trace the chain of, of value. And ultimately, you tend to end up with it all being about the value and the money, and the monkeys, potentially. So let's actually write our cucumber feature. OK, so let's just start off with a terrible example. So we've got a role, the person who's actually involved in this action, the website user. We've got our value. This is just what we discussed in popping the Y stack. And we have the actual feature that's going to be achieved, being able to rent with a priority. But as I said, this is, our, this is our narrative. This gets us started. But it's not a good example, and I've done this on purpose. Um, one of the real battles with plain text is noise. To be able to adds absolutely no value here. It actually contributes nothing. So you've really got to focus when you're writing these sort of things about getting rid of this sort of noise. Roles are also incredibly important. It's a great idea to brainstorm these roles beforehand. The website user, you know, we could do better. Something like the film member, maybe, gives us a bit more information. And also, you notice the feature. We don't actually mention the role. 
it's incredibly important to mention the role in the feature because, say, a film member renting a movie may be a completely different feature to maybe an admin user doing it. Cool, so we've got a nice feature now. So, moving on, the idea is we could have done this for a whole bunch of features, and we could have this, say, in our, uh, something like um, Pivotal, playing cards, whatever you want. Eventually, the customer is going to pick one and actually want to define, okay, what's done? What should we consider this value achieved? So this is where we actually start to write scenarios. So we've got our narrative up there. Now we're going to focus on the high priority. They're renting a movie with a high priority. Now there's a technique that's pretty common in unit testing called assert first. I believe it's Kent Beck who said it. We can actually apply a good practice to cucumber. Is by actually thinking about the thens first, we can really make sure we're focusing on the output. Because the output is where the business value comes from. So, Excuse me, then I should see my rental list, okay? I should see Cass Ahern in my rental list, okay? So I've obviously added a movie. And Cass Ahern should be marked as high priority, okay? So it gives us an idea of what the output should be. The actions, pretty simple. When I choose high priority and I press rent. And then the setup. Given I'm logged in and given I'm viewing the Cass Ahern. Now you notice, um, I think again, this was Bob Martin uh, who said, if your scenario isn't about login, why the hell are you talking about login? So what we tend to do in Cucumber is use a bit of abstraction. Like given I'm logged in, we haven't gone into the details of what this is. It doesn't matter for this scenario. And you'll also notice, and I'm viewing the movie Cassahern, we've just made the assumption that if, it, you know, if we're viewing it, it has to exist. The great thing about this is actually mocks come up from this. You know, there's some great tools where you can put some mock-ups as you think about what the output should be. So, let's actually do some cuking. Now, I've got a prepared demo of some action. So, I could install Cucumber as a gem, but I'm going to skip it for the moment and just run script generate in a Rails project. So, this is just going to set up my Rails project to do some Cucumber. Cool. It's generated some files. Let's have a quick look. So, it's generated this feature folder in a root of our app. Now, as you see, I've actually already added our feature into this. And we have these step definitions. So this is where our Ruby-style testing comes from. Now, as I told you, it ships with WebRap. This is a whole bunch of really useful step definitions about simple user interaction. I click something, I follow something. Again, the regex expressions with actually the testing code touching the WebRap API. And then we have support. This is like the setup, the environment, the bit of messy stuff. So this is about you know, setting Rails to test, loading the Rails, getting this kind of stuff set up. And also, one of the interesting ones is um, using transactional fixtures. Now, without going into the details, this means we don't have to clean up the database, which is awesome. And also, just setting up WebRap, telling it that we're running in Rails mode. WebRap does work with Merb and other, a bunch of other stuff. OK, so actually, let's run this and see what Cucumber tells us. Let's go back to our original feature. Now, I'm actually, you could use rake features, but because I want to fit this into a screen so everyone can see, I'm actually going to run it directly using Cucumber, just so I can squish it all in. OK, so Cucumber's now running, comparing. Oh, OK, we've got quite a bit of output. Now, notice the first thing is we've skipped the narrative. As I told you, it's not run. We don't really care about it. It's just documentation. Given I'm logged in, I've cheated slightly. We've already done this one, so I'm just going to jump over it. So we've got some grew yellow here, and I'm viewing the movie Cassaher. Yellow means that they're undefined. There's no relative expression which matched our plain text. Now, you also notice we've got some blue here as well. These are actually skip steps. So a relative expression did exist, but it couldn't finish running because the previous step, and I'm viewing the movie Cassaher, never passed. One of the really great things here, and you know, it's, it's wonderful when it starts happening, is you're fine with your scenarios. Sometimes you won't actually do any coding whatsoever. You'll just be reusing steps that already exist. And this, this, to me, is actually the ultimate goal with Cucumber. OK, now we've got some stuff down the bottom here called snippets. So this is actually Cucumber doing us work for us. So it's given us a block with a relative expression at the top. So this matches, and I'm doing the movie Cassaher. But you'll notice it's actually produced another little regex for us. So we're actually going to match the Cassaher value directly, rather than having to do this ourselves. 
So Cucumber accepts we're lazy and we want it done for us. So let's just quickly copy this and actually write our first bit of Ruby testing code. So we're going to create a movie file. Now your idea is to base your steps around your domain concepts. So let's just quickly get it out there. OK, let's change that to actually something more sensible, movie title. That's what's getting matched. So what do we want to do? We want to create a movie. Now notice I use an exclamation mark here, and I want it to fail loudly for any reason this goes wrong. I don't want to run through the entire system and have lots of fails and it break. OK, pretty simple. Now I'm going to dip into the WebRat API, just visit, just like going to a URL, and use a little bit of restful paths as well. Just visit the movie. So let's run that and see what happens. Cool, we've got green. And I'm viewing the movie Cat and is now passing. So we're now a step on. But we have a red. OK, when I choose high priority, it could not find the field high priority, which makes sense. We haven't actually done anything at all yet other than write a test. So let's jump into our views. So we've actually already got movies existing in this Rails app. So we're going to just jump to the show view. Now, as you see, we're not doing anything. We want to add the rental list here so actually someone can request a DVD. I'm going to cheat and do something very ugly. I'm actually creating the model in the view. I wouldn't do this, but it's just so we can speed this up and get through a lot. But the big thing, you know, I've added a label. WebRat is very important on labels. It encourages you to use them. High priority, and then just a rent button. So it's pretty simple. I've also actually included the movie just so we can attach this rental request to a movie. So let's run this and see how far we've moved along. OK. Ah, we've got another error. OK, we haven't actually done any model creation yet, rental request. So of course, it's not going to find it. We referenced it in the view. So I'm going to cheat slightly here. Oh, can I get that so it shows? There we go. Ooh, there. Uh, so we're going to just use our spec model generation here, just a generator. It's going to dump a bunch of aspects for us as templates, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. I'm going to give it priority, just an integer for how important it is, and then a movie, so just what movie this rental request references. Okay, so let's just quickly set that all up, get the system running. Let's run our cucumber again, see how far we've got to achieving the user's value. Okay, another error. Rental request path. OK, we haven't done any roots yet, have we? So this is actually accepting the fact that in testing, it's not just model view and controller. We have to think about roots as well. There is more than just three in the stack. OK, pretty simple. We're just going to tell it to map the URL for rental requests. So let's just save this and quickly run it again. Cool. When I choose high priority and I'm moving the few cats, I'm both past now. OK, let's quickly move on to our next one. OK, we haven't actually created a controller yet. So let's quickly use the aspect generators again to knock together for us a controller. Again, it's just like a normal controller generator, but just a little bit of aspect for us. But to be honest with you, you could use any testing framework you wanted here. So I'm just going to create the create and the index method in this controller, creating the movie and listing all the rental requests. Cool. Let's jump back into Cucumber again, see how far we've got. OK, now this is an interesting error. We got the I, rent, I press rent pass, but it can't find my rental list. Now, Cucumber's looking for the destination that a rental request exists, but it's going to the create method. Now, it doesn't care where we actually go, it just wants this text. Its destination is the text. But you know, we want to think about the objects here a bit. What, what's happening at the object level? We want to go beyond Cucumber and start thinking about, actually, what's the details of this system? What should the behavior be? And at this level, I'm going to jump into the specs and think a bit more about the objects. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about the syntax of our spec here. It's not really important. It's more the idea about these lower level tests. OK, so I'm going to just clean up some of the automated gunk. And now, so I'm just, the context of this test is the request, rental request controller. and. I'm just going to generate a little bit of helper stuff for me just to speed this along. OK, so now we're talking about posting to create, creating a rental request. I've just knocked together a little quick helper, just quite like the way that reads. It's just a personal thing for me, really. So you'll notice, actually, there's a bit of plain text in here. Again, 
In our spec, we're expressing ourselves in plain text. We stop and think, specify, what should it do? What should the behavior of this controller be when it posts to create? Well, I'm guessing we probably want an index page to list all our rental requests and not the create page. Kind of makes pretty much sense, doesn't it? So let's actually write in our spec a test. So, you know, we're just saying it should, you know, it reads again, response should redirect to the rental request path. Let's just knock together the actual call to post, and then let's actually dip down and run our specs. Actually, when you install our spec, there's just a little spec tool you can run. Okay, cool, so we've now got a failing. Expected redirect to rental requests, got no redirect. Okay, so let's actually make this spec pass. It's going to be pretty easy. We just want to jump back to our, excuse me, we want to jump back to our crate. And you know, this is a no-brainer. We just want to add a redirection to the index page. You know, this is dead simple, beginner's rail stuff. Pretty simple. Let's jump to our spec. So we've got our failing user level. We've still got that failing, but we're now down slightly lower. We've now passed, our spec's passing. Our objects are doing something we expect them to do. So let's jump back up and say, right, have we created what the customer wants yet? Well, we see got the same error. As far as Cucumber is concerned, it doesn't care again. The destination, you haven't got there. But we're now at the index creation. So let's actually quickly just jump in and let's just add this text just so we can finish on a bit of green and feel happy inside. Okay, so we've just got the automated generated one here. It's going to be pretty easy. I just need to add my rental requests. I save that and we should have some lovely green. Cool. So we now progress right down to actually see my rental or a list. Now, I don't want to keep going with here because, you know, it gets a little slow. So I'm going to skip these two steps for the moment and jump on forward slightly. So there's just a good example of how Cucumber and RSpec fit together. So here's one I baked earlier or cuked earlier. So let's just imagine everything's been done. Don't worry too much. The font's a little slow. It's not really important here. Just imagine that these two steps are completed. I've actually also added high, medium, and low priority. I want to focus on what you can do actually at the feature level. I hate adding given I'm logged in to all my scenarios in like a thousand features. So there's this quite cool thing called background, a background context to your feature. Just add the background tag. And just like a scenario, lots of givens. So given I'm logged in. Now this means before every scenario in this feature, that background will be run. It's a great way of reducing noise in the system. Let's run it again and see what happens. Okay, it's still passed. We can see background slightly separately. It's been run isolated. Now imagine our customer comes to us and says, could you write a scenario for medium and low priority as well? Now, this could get nasty. Copy and paste three scenarios and just change the text in one place. That screams at us that something's wrong. So this is a new thing Cucumber does, which is scenario outlines. So what we're doing is actually turning this, uh, rather than directly executed, into a bit of like a template. What I'm doing is using a placeholder here and actually replacing the high priority with this special placeholder, which actually will get replaced with some values. It, all that's important about it is it's marked with those two arrow keys. So how do we actually insert some data into this? It's just a template. We use something called an example table. This is, again, dead simple plain text, just a, like a little wiki table. But the key thing here is the title, the first row, matches that of the placeholders. Now we're actually going to add the values. So the idea is that for each value, it will run the scenario, taking that high priority and fitting it in wherever there's a placeholder that matches. You could have a number of different values in the tables. This was really an evolution of fitness style tables. And it's evolved quite a long way through Cucumber. So let's run it directly and see what it looks like. OK, some, some skip steps. It was never run directly. But you can see in each of our table rows, it passed. So it means for the high priority one, everything passed, medium, low. This is a really useful technique for trying to reduce noise in Cucumber features. OK, I showed you how to install it as a gem. Just quickly, if you want to grab it from as a plugin, you can grab it from Aslak Hellsoy's GitHub repo. If you really want the edge, you can run on Aslak's Cucumber. That sounds quite rude. Um, OK, I want to look at fixtures for you quickly. Um, 
Fixtures are interesting with Cucumber. We saw how we use tables in scenario outlines. We can also use tables in step definitions. Again, the most important thing, the, the first row is the title, and then we actually have some data values. Just like the relative expression matches, this is passed in as a parameter to the block. It's actually an object which can do some quite funky stuff, but at the simplest, we can just call do, to hashes on it and get a list of hashes. You know, dead simple, loop through it and create a bunch of movies. This is great, but there's probably a better approach. Abstraction is our friend in plain text. Is it really important to list all these details? Does it actually bring any value to the customer? Again, is this just noise? Can we say what's more important? You know, given two films with color in the title, you know, do we really care what the titles of the movies are? That's not important. In this searching example, it's really about the fact there's just some color. But I've misspelled color. Cool. That's American programming for me. Sticking it to the world. OK, a little bit of insight into actual Ruby, a bit more. Every scenario in Ruby, and uh, Cucumber, sorry, is a megalomaniac. It gets a scenario, a world, and within this world, it can do anything it wants to it. And each step leaves the world dirty and broken. But then each scenario gets thrown, the world gets thrown away and started with a completely new, fresh one. So how do we actually get our Ruby code into this scenario? Because Ruby code is a great way to try and abstract out some of your test information. This is just a really brief example of actually one that ships with Cucumber. It's a little helper function which maps strings, the home page, to actually the URLs. You know, dead simple, but really useful. It means we can concentrate all our URLs in here. What we simply do is we call this world function with a block. We just extend world, and that's it. Now, in all our scenarios, we'll be able to access all those functions. Hooks. Again, if you've come across unit testing style stuff, pretty trivial. Set up and tear down, basically, if you've heard of them before. But one of the trick ups that a lot of new people make, hooks are global, and that Cucumber will store a stack of every before that's defined throughout your Ruby code. It will then, for every scenario, run each and every one of these. So it's a little different to how tear up and tear down traditionally work. OK, so moving on to something more high level, how many scenarios is enough? Well, Uncle Bob Martin makes an interesting point. Given when then is very much like a finite state machine. If we think about every possible permutation, we could have a movie in and a rental list. And then every possible permutation that we could do an action there to move us to another state. And then every possible outcome, we quickly hit a mass state explosion. So again, coming back to what I said earlier on, to me, the question again is, what's the return on investment? Why are we doing this? If we've got a customer, how much detail do they want to go into this feature? Is it mission critical? Is this fundamental to their entire business? Then, you know, heck, they're going to want lots of scenarios. You know, is it less important? Are they happy maybe a two or three? If you're doing it on your own, I guess it's the fact that Cucumber scenarios are quite expensive. We're cutting through the entire stack. Maybe it's better suited to do more edge cases at the spec level, where we can do much faster in an isolation. So that, like, like all good answers, it, it depends. Cowcumbers. It's a pretty scary picture. Uh, bad smells, or well, I like to call them. Um, they used to believe that eating cucumbers actually gave you some horrible diseases. That's where cowcumbers come from. I hope nobody knew that. So just two examples I want to go into. State, well, state's a difficult one. You have to use sometimes state in Cucumber, but it couples your steps together. If we assign the movie variable in this step, that means that the other steps can access it, but then they become coupled to this previous step. And remember, one of our goals with Cucumber is to be able to do lots of reuse of our base, of our explanation of our domain. So, you know, it is sometimes needed, but you have to think carefully about it. Now, the big one that I deal with constantly on LMRC, testing without user value. The classic example is testing the URL. There's a couple of edge cases where you may want to touch the URL. But really, ask yourself, what's the user value in what the URL is? When is your customer going to say, I want the URL to be 16779922? It doesn't happen. What the customer is going to say is, you know, I'm on the rental list page. There should be something there which tells me where I am. That's where the value tends to come from. Also, checking the DB. I'm a bit dubious about DB checking. Again, 
How does the user check the DB? Through the interface. So again, we should be thinking out the value and the interface. Building your DSL. Ultimately, as I said again and again, Cucumber is about building a language to talk about your domain, your own personalized language. One of the common things we hear is concrete versus abstract. With concrete, I mean we're really talking about all the details. I'm logged in, I fill in the username, I fill in the password, I click log in. Now, in a conversation with a customer, listing everything is hard enough to build a system. It's just too much detail most of the time. So when you're starting with Cucumber, I tend to find you kind of start actually away from concrete, a little bit more towards abstract. Abstract, abstract we throw away the details. Given I'm logged in, it doesn't really matter what the details are. We can hide them away. But there's a danger there as well. With abstraction comes a gulf between your expectations and the customers. So again, there's a bit of a balance. Personally, from my experience, what I've found is that as your domain understanding increases, your confidence to use abstraction and to understand what's going on with the customer. If we've been talking about login for the last six months, you know, we've got a good assumption that we know what we're talking about here. One of the things that makes this whole building of a language possible and introduces the concept of hierarchy is being able to call the plain text from within a step definition. So this is like almost taking the plain text into your Ruby code. The example here, given I'm logged in, you can see that I'm creating a user then I'm almost calling the plain text, given I fill in the password, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the real beauty about this is you can start with perhaps some concrete steps to get you going. And as you evolve, you create a more abstract step, which incorporates those steps. And you can keep on you know, building this up and building up so you actually can have a decent conversation rather than spending six hours talking about how you log in. OK, deep breath. Now, imagine a customer comes to us and says, can I have some of that funky JavaScript? Now, JavaScript, the feedback loop gets bigger. Because with JavaScript, we tend to need to use a browser. And unfortunately, JavaScript, it, it, kills web, it doesn't quite kill web browser. But we can no longer use in memory. And what does that mean? Well, speed goes down. Oh, sorry, speed goes up. Down? Down. So I don't have a brief description, Watir, Selenium, Celerity are what generally people tend to test JavaScript stuff with. Watir and Selenium are browser-based, so it actually physically loads a browser, and you actually get to see the test running, which is kind of cool. Uh, what's pretty new and is really interesting for me at the moment is headless browsers. So it doesn't actually load the browser. It still does it all in memory. Now, Celerity is a great project. I really recommend you guys check out. It's actually based on HTML unit, a Java library. Um, without going into the details, this actually emulates JavaScript. So how do we act? Well, I actually told you a bit of a lie. WebRap will do Selenium. It can't actually use the in-memory, but we can reuse all our step definitions. We don't have to write everything twice, once for Selenium and once for internal memory. So, you know, we have to turn transactional fixtures off. Unfortunately, we now have to clean up the DB ourselves. Switch it to Selenium, and then we have to manually, as I said, clean up the DB. I want to drop this in. This is a pretty new feature, and I'm briefly going to cover it. But imagine you've got now your JavaScript and you've got your um, in-memory ones. You now need to separate all your features based on JavaScript, which you know, kind of sucks. Previously, the solution was doing this in folders. But now we've actually introduced a new feature called tags. It's pretty simple, just an at sign, and then just any plain text you want. So how will we use this in JavaScript? Well, we could tag some of our scenarios or features, maybe JS. And then using Cucumber, we can say, OK, run all features or all scenarios that aren't JS, and then all features that are JS. I highly recommend you guys check this one out, because this is pretty new, and we're still learning how to use this. And I think we haven't yet tapped into the full potential of tagging. OK, I'm going to show you a very brief demo of, Q of WebRap running Selenium. This will immediately hit the realization to you of the diff speed and difference. So we're sitting here waiting for Selenium to actually launch a browser. This is the slowest part of Selenium. OK, so you've got the browser running. You'll blink, you'll miss it. It's gone. I'll see if actually I actually can grab this back a second. So you actually see it's actually interacting. We get to see what's going on. Um, where I work, we've probably got, I don't know now, maybe 60 or 70 of these, and it's pretty cool to sit back and just watch it as if someone's like robots touching your system. Okay, just summing up. 
Um, some further reading. I suggest you check out, there's the Cukes official website. Uh, the wiki on GitHub is probably the greatest source of information on Cucumber. And again, the wiki is editable by everyone, so please have a look. If there's anything you think that's silly, please edit it and improve it. There's RSpec, again, the official website. And you can check out my blog where I tend to comment about what we're doing with Cucumber and some of the new features we're adding. Uh, one of the big things I have to hit on is the new RSpec book. Although this isn't out in hardback yet, you can get the beta version. And I highly recommend this if you ever get a chance to read it. OK, thank you all very much. Um, since I um, did the talk, I guess I get to ask the first question. So who thinks I passed? Hands up if you think I passed. Cool. Thank you. Okay, so has anyone got any questions? I think I've got three or four minutes if anyone wants to ask anything. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Who thought I failed? Can I get that? There must be someone. It's a shame you would have got a book, but okay, it's fine. <laughs> Although, I actually, I have to say, the guy who lent me this adapter for my laptop deserves a prize. So come see me, and I'll give you um, one of the beta books for RSpec. Okay, sorry, there was a hand there. Yeah, sure, shoot. Yeah. You, 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 you tend to do them separately. You would run Cucumber in one run, running a specific subset of those. Exactly, yeah. We run one which is our kind of our Selenium one, and then one which is our Rails one. Cool. Uh, is there anything else? Yeah, sure. Shoot. One of the most frustrating things about Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to at least run the scenario. That's well, uh, I see what you're saying. Um, so the question is, yeah, talking about feedback from the scenarios and uh, well. WebRat, um, I think if you check out the latest version from GitHub, WebRat actually, if it has a bad error, or if it's a 404 page or an error page, it actually launches the browser for you with the error. So you can actually immediately get feedback on the error. Um, in terms of running the scenarios, at the moment, the smallest unit you can run is the scenario. It kind of makes sense, because you need the setup and the actions. Um, you can switch between, well, sometimes you can actually take all your um, WebRat steps and run them in JavaScript and vice versa. So if you're running a JavaScript stuff and it's running slowly, you can kind of switch back and forth sometimes. So you might want some fast feedback and run it through WebRap and then pull it over and then run it through JavaScript. So again, you can get a bit of a bit of feedback loop faster there. But yeah, I said that. Cool. Uh, any other questions? <coughs> yeah, sure. I mean, that's an interesting idea. It's kind of where the prototyping comes about. And that I find Cucumber, it is quite emergent in that it starts that discussion. And I find what we often do when we're sitting down with customer is that initial token of conversation will be, let's get a blackboard. The customer doesn't quite know what they want. Let's talk about it. Let's, you know, extracting that value. So, you know, scribbling on boards and things. We actually kind of help the user progress to find out what they want with us helping them along the way. And I find when you're actually doing these cucumber scenarios, it's great to have an interaction designer in the process as well. Because then you get a lot of good feedback on the interface, which can, again, kind of help guide the customer if they're not too sure where they want to go. Kind of suggestions on design and different directions they could head for. Cool. Anyone else? Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Well, is it a viable approach to start not to test the database, but to something which is already in kind of a minimum amount of mm -hmm. data and then just insert whatever I need to that scenario? 
Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, what some people do is they tend to um, set up the database at the start. So they'll actually kind of preload everything before they actually then start running the scenarios to get the database in a complex state. What I've, what I've generally found is with the database, when you're dealing with very complica complicated data setup, that actually may be a bit of an indication that perhaps you need to more tightly focus in on something. Because when you've got a very complex data setup, when something goes wrong, you've also got a very complex process to then work out what the heck went on. But there are, there are some use cases where people set things up before. You could actually use fixtures, although I didn't want to say that out loud properly. You can actually use normal Rails fixtures and get those actually to run through Cucumber. If you check out the GitHub wiki, there's actually a page title dealing with fi Rails and fixtures. Okay. Anyone else? Cool. Thank you very much.